And we're back uh, to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're going back in time now, and I'm going to 1968. On this day in history, what happened was the only successful hijacking of a plane. It was the El Pal um, El airplane in Israel. And it was an Israeli plane that had um, 38 uh, passengers and 10 crew members. Um, this El Al aircraft um, was actually moving from, um, from Rome to Israel. Israel. And um, the unfortunate thing was that there were three hijackers on the aircraft and they were members of the Popular Fronts for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP. Now these hijackers, let me give you a bit of a story. So the um, pilots actually requested for coffee. So while, you know, the door was opened, they simply went in, they used the uh, butt of their gun to, or their pistol to hit one of the um, pilots and they ordered him to divert the air, air, airplane from, you know, they were en route from Rome to Israel to divert it to Algeria. And the plane landed in Algeria. It was then grounded. What happened was that the authorities there in Algeria um, basically got every non-Israeli passenger and took them, you know, aboard an Air France. But um, every Israeli passenger remained on board. Negotiations lasted for 40 days. The good thing is that no one was hurt. There was no fatality. But these people were carefully chosen. It was a pilot. It was a karate, um, a karate fighter and a cook. So they basically planned to stay as long as they could to get, you know, whatever they wanted. But the good thing is that, you know, nobody was hurt and um, they, they basically didn't achieve their, their, their final aim at the end of the day. And this El Al um, Flight 707 has played an important role in humanitarian rescue efforts. And now they've been airlifting Jews from other countries to Israel. And they basically set a world record for the most passengers on a commercial aircraft. Um, I think they achieved their aim, or some part of their aim. The um, um, negotiations ended with uh, about 16 Arab uh, released. convicts released. Yeah, so that you know, I believe was one of the was one of the reasons they carried out the hijacking in the first place. Um, maybe one of the reasons, maybe the only reason why they carried out the uh, hijacking. And unfortunately, the, the story doesn't share uh, what happened to them if they eventually were arrested or sent to jail. Or or they were released. It ends by saying that they were freed along with the um, um, all the passengers. Um, but yeah, that's that's on El Al. Uh, let's go back to 2015 now and talk a little bit about the Me Too movement and uh, somebody who was uh, released uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, Bill Cosby. Yes, June 30th. You remember, yeah, uh, there was a court ruling, a judge actually uh, set him free because he had an agreement with a case uh, from you know a couple of years earlier. Uh, that um, you know meant that he could not be prosecuted for that case again, but it was on this day in 2015 that a court um, uh, disallowed his um, um, uh, trying to. Um, let, let's see what it says. It says that they rejected his petition to uh, go against a civil case on his alleged sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl at the Playboy Mansion in 1974. Um, the California Supreme Court rejected that petition. And of course, he failed to block a civil case um, on this day. In his testimony, he admitted to casual sex involving the recreational use of a particular sedative, popularly known as Kaludis, uh, with a series of young women. He also acknowledged that his dispensing of the prescription drug was illegal. He maintained his innocence and repeatedly denied the allegations made against him from this case and then other cases. And um, his uh, first trial on the 2nd of June in 2015 ended in a mistrial. And uh, of course, he eventually was sentenced to jail until he was eventually set free on the 30th of June 2021. But that, of course, um, is the story of Bill Cosby. Um, and like I said, you know, no matter how beautiful and illustrious your career is, one single mistake that you make in the course of enjoying your career can eventually ruin all you've worked for for 40 years mm -hmm. or even more. But I really don't know how the Me Too movement would see this. Would they see this as, oh, he finally got some jail time at the end of the day, so we, we this was a victory for us? Or would they say, well, at the end of the day, the court is now saying his due process was violated and it wasn't exactly a victory at the end of the day? I really don't know how they interpret the fact that Bill Cosby is now a free man, but it is what it is. He's been released and he's back home. It is what it is, absolutely. Um, 
All right, that's it, 2015 and uh, 1968. 68. Yes, uh, today in history. Take a short break. When we come back, our first major conversation for today, Nigerians in diaspora. How many are they really? And of course, uh, the programs that are going to be running in Nigeria in the next couple of days, trying to improve on the narrative concerning Nigerians in diaspora. We'll talk about that after the short break.